I'm going to get started now on modeling the air conditioner and I've got pure ref open with all those references but to tell you the truth this one I had seen originally and this is the one I keep coming back to so I think I'm going to do mostly this kind of stuff all right so I'm going to just push that over there for now and start with the default cube and look from the front and GZ1 move it up and let's uh, let's scale that in the Y and it's obviously not going to look exactly the same as this, <laughs> definitely for the texturing, but even for the modeling. And I should say right off the bat that it is a definite um, consideration. What are we going to do in geometry and what are we going to do in texturing? Because you have to sort of know that. And if you don't do the right mix it can look really odd um, so I may do more stuff in geometry than I should because this is blender modeling and not everybody's gonna have substance painter and I know that when I switch to that I'm gonna lose some of you viewers and so I want to do as much modeling as I can but I also want to leave some room for texturing and I may end up deciding to do some texturing that just doesn't fit right um, so that's that's the issue that we have to deal with but at any rate we're going to get started with this with a um, sort of a, a rectangle like structure okay and I want to do the, the body and I want to do the top and the bottom which you, I suppose you could call part of the body anyhow but uh, all right so let's try this let's throw in an edge loop and control B and pull it up and pull it down equally so we have something like that and we can get going with this so um let's grab these edges i'm holding shift and alt and clicking the edge so i get the whole edge and let's bevel this and it's nicely it's nicely rounded or at least it looks that way to me or i want to do it that way so so i'm going to do this there's two three four five and i tend to do five like that all right now I'm going to press 3 for face selection. I'm going to select select there. I think we'll do these at the same time and select there. And I'm going to go Control Plus. That's going to expand my selection so I have the top and the bottom. And I'm going to press P and Enter. So I'll separate by selection. So I now have this part and I have this part. I'm going to come back to this part. And I'm going to try just Alt S and pull to make it a little smaller like that. Now let's see how even that is. I think it's maybe not bad so if I do that yeah that's okay so let's come back here and shift alt and click here for the bottom piece anyhow and let's control and let's scale this in the Y underneath and scale it in the X also underneath so we don't have a gap there and let's come back to the top one and shift alt and click E let's scale this in the Y so that it goes underneath and scale it in the X so it goes underneath so we have that okay now we're going to bevel the top edge here now looks like they've got a bit of a chamfer on there uh, let's uh, do that let's see look at that and let's see it's hard to tell on the bottom it's probably the same so we've got that and that so let's try that maybe let's control B and pull roll back to zero and do that but I'm not going to leave it like that. Um, I'm going to shade smooth first of all. And I'll bring in some edge loops. Let's see how many we need. I'm probably going to need um, on each edge. Start. Let's start with that. And let's let's just take this bottom edge and just bevel it with three. Do that. 
I'll do something about the shading in, in, its, in a bit. So let's do the same thing here. Bring an edge loop on each end and bevel the bottom with three. And we'll see, I could probably solve that just with, with an inset that gives one other edge. I think I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna select, and I'm gonna press I to inset, and I'm just gonna pull in. That essentially is like bringing in another edge. So there's the top and there's the bottom. Now I want to do something else with this. I want to separate out actually the sides. I'm actually going to get rid of that side because I'm going to mirror it. And I'm going to take this one here and I'm going to P to break it out. And I'm going to hide that for the moment. And uh, actually, I can just do it this way. I want to just focus on this slash key. I just want to focus on that. And I'm going to come into edge selection and select that edge and that edge. And I'm going to extrude it in just a little bit like that. And then I'm going to bevel this edge. And we'll see what that does for us in a moment. So I'm just going to zoom in, control B. Three is probably okay. Let's try Shade Smooth, and we may need to put on a modifier. Let's slash key to bring that back. And I think I will take this piece and just ever so slightly pull it in. And I may need to scale it in the Y just to make sure it tucks underneath. Okay, now, are any of these flipped? No, not yet, good. So I have that. Okay. Let's do some work on that side there. This is what I'm looking at here. It's gonna be a rounded piece in the middle and that, and again, that could be texture, but I think I'm gonna do it in geometry. So let's look from the side, number three, come in here and control R, drop an edge loop and control B, pull it out, roll back to zero, so I just have the two edges, come out to about there, and then control B again. Hold shift to go slower. I just want these two vertical edges that would, would go up and down. And then I extrude them in. I don't need to come in too far. I may exaggerate a little bit more than I would need to. So I'm gonna do that. Slash key to focus just on that. Let's get rid of some extra faces. Press three, select that one. Hold shift, select that one. Come down here, select this one, and then this one, X faces. Now we need to bevel. Now, I should say that I don't use the bevel modifier that much. Uh, so what I do is pretty destructive. I can go back and delete edges and do it again, but I just tend to find that this is the way that I like to work. So control B and pull like this. I'll put just one edge in there. And that is going to be that section right there so now I want to do the rounded rectangle part and let's see how central that is because there's a hole as you can see there's more space down here than there is at the, at the top so we can use this right there it's already central so let's do that shift D let's pull that out P to break it out and let's look from the side and let's scale it down and sort of look at the diagram for the width of that. I'm gonna pull it up and I'm gonna scale it in the Y a little bit. I'm gonna start rounding this now in edge selection. I'm gonna select this edge, hold shift, select this edge, and I'm gonna bevel. It probably actually is easier if I use one vertex selection. I'm gonna press shift control B and pull. And I think I'm gonna press C to clamp and that will prevent them from overlapping. I'll, I'll, I'll take it off and let, let's zoom in a little bit. Let's shift control B again and press C again so it's gone. See, see they can overlap. If I press C, they'll hit. Then I can roll my mouse up until I get a nice round edge. Something like that. But then the points are overlapping, so I have to select it all, go M, merge by distance, and look down there, I've removed some, but I have a nice rounded piece now. So I can still, of course, come in here, I didn't have to go to wireframe, pull this up or down, so 
maybe I'll do that and that's going to be my my piece that's what I'm going to use I'm going to do a boolean so I'm going to extrude this out and now I think I probably went the wrong way and it's red so I'm just going to select it alt n recalculate outside and I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to push it in here just like that and it's okay if it goes through and I'll do a boolean there and then I'll make a hole uh, near the bottom and I may not have as much room as this um, if I take this and I scale it a little bit like that and pull it up a bit maybe that's fine too okay so select my main piece and go boolean I'll just leave it like this but on difference and with the eyedropper I'll select this and I will apply this and I'm going to delete that and I have an indent now and I've got some edges that come up like that but that should be okay but I'm going to bevel this so I'm going to press shift alt and click the edges but not that one and then I'm going to zoom in and look from an angle so I can see my bevel control B and pull and there's two edges three sometimes I do more on these things if I want them to be smoother but I mean we're not going to look up too close so that's what I have and that's okay and there'll be bolts in the middle of this okay now there is some kind of a, a hole here uh, again that's probably texture and then you have another piece but I'm gonna I'm gonna cut an actual hole here looking from the side so I want to select something that's kind of central I'm just gonna grab all these dots and shift S cursor selected that'll bring my 3d cursor there so I'm gonna bring a cylinder in at least it's central so I'm gonna bring in a cylinder and I'm gonna leave it at 32 vertices be relatively smooth if you want it more smooth go up in vertices um, how wide is this I would think it's wider than, than the width of that let's just rotate y90 and see what that would look like somewhere down around there it's not actually that that far off I think I'm just going to do that okay so I'm gonna select my main piece again boolean difference this apply I'm am I gonna get rid of that I'm not sure yet so I'm just gonna hide it and I have a bit of a hole and for now I think I'm going to select all these edges and I think I'm going to extrude them in like that and bevel this edge it'll be more visible and I might want it that way control B and I'm, I may up the uh, the number of vertices I use I'm gonna shade smooth and now we have some shading issues so let's try weighted normal and normals auto smooth sometimes I will have to throw a bevel even at one division on there so that's there I can come back to that in fact I'm going to be closing that hole up later because on the other side uh, where, where can you see it? you can see it here they, they have that but it's covered all right so I'm going to mirror that right now I'm going to select the main the main body shift S cursor to select it and I'm going to uh, mirror around there I'm going to set the origin to the 3d cursor and I'm going to mirror and that didn't work so what did I not do all right let's uh, let's take the top and the bottom and try that okay that worked there all right at this point I'm going to apply the mirror so that I can come back in and only work on one side and I will select this edge and I think I'm going to maybe delete those vertices and then take these and have to make a face close it off a little closer to the surface all right we'll come back to that later let's now work on this front piece here all right we can see that we have a, a slope and coming down we also have this cut we're gonna have to deal with so let's work on that let's see what we can do for that um, I'm thinking we'll select that and bring the 3d cursor there make sure that's that is the front 
Let's bring in a plane. Rotate X90. And I'm already liking the width. Let's scale this in the Z. We'll bring it out a little bit. And just compare the size of this. Let's round this off and then use this to cut into the body to uh, to actually create that piece so that we can do the cut properly. Otherwise, I would probably just make this and lay it on top. But because we want to cut through it all, I think it, I want it to be part of the main body. And the way I'm going to do that is shift control B. I'm going to hold shift and round these corners. I want five vertices in there. Now, I may get more or less of a curve. That's actually not bad. So I want that. And then I'm going to extrude it back. And I'm going to recalculate the polys. Okay. I'm going to take this. Now, you can, you can knife project. But I think I'm going to do it this way. It, it ends up with the same basic result. I'm going to do a Boolean here. with this I'm gonna get rid of that and what I'm gonna do is um, I'm actually gonna come up and get rid of that not that far then get rid of those faces and I actually I don't I don't need those uh, vertices that I get everything all right let's select the entire edge there Press E to extrude and pull out just a little, little bit like that. And then I'm going to press E to extrude and come out further. I may have moved it. I did. E, come out a little further. And I'm going to press S to scale. Let's look from the front. And I may SZ to get a little bit more even. And I'm just going to make a face at that point and have a look at this. Okay, so let's do a bit of work on this. I'm going to bevel this edge, Control-B, pull, and I just want three edges pretty tightly in there. I'm going to drag another edge down here and have a look at that. And that's roughly what I'm going for. All right, but we have some shading issues, so... Let's have a look at this. Now, I'm going to be cutting through this in a second anyhow, but let's try, first of all, just weighted normal and normal's auto smooth. It looks like that has pretty much solved our problem, and so we don't have to go any further for the moment. Okay. I think I'm going to like that. In some ways, this is a bit tighter than I, than I like. It doesn't really matter. Okay, same difference. Okay, we now need a cut through the whole body. So let's just focus on the body there. In fact, uh, I think I'm going to separate the back. Select a piece, Control L, P to break it out. I'll bring everything back and start again. I'll just grab that piece, slash key. I just want the cut for now through the front. There are cuts on the back, and you would probably want them the same diameter or same width anyhow, but we're not going to see them at the same time. I'm not going to worry right now about that. So I just want to work on the front, and I want to get a cut. Let's see, what is this, two-thirds and one-third, perhaps? Now, I can't put an edge loop through this, all right? So because, what I'm going to do instead is make sure I'm looking orthographically, from the front, select the whole thing. I'm going to come up here to mesh and I'm going to choose bisect. Nothing's happened, but now I can just hold the left mouse button and cut through. Sort of like you could use the knife tool, but I'm going to do that and then I'm going to SX0. Let's try that again. SX0. Scale it in the X so it's straight. And then I can move this until I like where it's going to be. I want a large area for the fan and I just want a smaller area here for that and that's, that's that's probably good enough. 
Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to control B to bevel, pull. I just want two, and I want to figure out how, you know, how wide do I want this? I want a relatively large area like that, I think, to maybe a little bit less. All right, anyhow. Okay, I'm going to press E and then Alt S, but I want to look in this area and make sure things don't cross. So E to extrude, Alt S, and pull. And if I pull too far, they'll start crossing over. So I'm just going to look, Alt S, pull until I've got a nice indent and I don't have crossing over. And then to make it more visible, I'm going to bevel those edges. But first of all, I'll come up here, number three, face selection, and I'll delete that face. And I'll come down here, and I'll delete this face. And now I can bevel the edges. So press two for edge selection, shift, alt, and click, shift, alt, and click. And then just find a place to look, zoom in nice and close. And I will control B to bevel. And I pay, may put more than three. I may put five. And I have my cut in there. Now it's darker here. When I add dirt and stuff in Substance Painter, I imagine that will darken up. Or I could make that dark if I wanted to. I just want to see about putting an edge in there and control B with just two and see if that does any better for any reason if I needed that. I don't think I do. On the other hand, I do want to have that. So I'm going to leave that in there. Just to give some more support. And I think it did change the shading by a little, little bit. Alright, so we have that there. Slash key to bring stuff back. We, let's have a look at the back. All right, it looks like we've got a third on this side, a third, and and uh, yeah, whatever. Maybe a fifth and a fifth and three fifths, if that's if my math is right. Let's look, uh, control one, let's look at the back, and let's, we can put an edge loop in there, drop an edge loop in there, split this. I'm looking at the diagram, and I'm looking at this, and then control B again. Ah, sorry. Grab those, control B again. And getting a similar width. And then for this one, I can just extrude in like that. And I'll get rid of the tops and the bottoms. And then we'll bevel those edges. All right, grab this one and hold shift and get that one, this one, and this one. Zoom in, control B. And I think I had five before that. You know, it may be overkill, but now those look a little bit wide to me and uh, I think what I'm going to do is look from the back go into wireframe box select okay too much box select that box select that and let's just go let's switch to individual origins and SX and that will just individually scale those regions that may not be enough SX, X, sorry, SX, and I'll, I'll just live with that. Let's, don't forget to switch back to median point. So that's a nice deep cut. So I may have to darken this up. I may put some, some uh, dark coloration in there, uh, as opposed to maybe looking at both of these. And this one is is in nicely. And. Uh, Let me just see if there's anything. I'm going to control plus because I had a bevel on there. If I pull that in, will that just break what I've done? It doesn't quite line up anymore if I've done that, but I don't think that's a real problem. So I may go with with what I've got there okay so this would have been a real nice thing to do with texture 
<laughs> instead of what I've done, but that's okay. Now I can move it if I still if I wanted to still. If I didn't like the position of this. But I think it's probably okay. So it's time now to start thinking about that fan. I'm just going to shift S cursor to selected. It. It's not quite in the middle, so mm, I think we're going to have to live with the three cursor there. I'm going to bring in now a uh, a cylinder, but I don't think I want 32. I think I'm going to go all the way up to 64 vertices to create a, a hole. Now it's not just going to be a hole. Uh, there's going to be a section that you're going to s potentially see right here because this clip sort of is on the surface and then it goes down under this piece or you know or something along that line and I don't want this part to look jagged so that's why I'm going for a higher vertice and I'm going to make this as, as 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 big as I can that's probably about as big as I can as I can make it uh, circularly all right circularly so let's just focus on this and this slash um, slash key and let's create a hole now here all right so I've got that on so I'm going to add a boolean I'm going to drag it to the top and I'm going to choose this and I'm going to apply and I'm going to hide this. I'm not going to get rid of it. So I now have a hole through here. Now what is it I want to do? So this is this this hole I'm thinking. So I guess it goes down and it goes under a little bit. I guess you would have to do it that way. So let's let's try that. So I'm going to select the edges and I'm going to E to extrude, pull down a bit like this. And I'm going to press E and S and come in a little ways. I'm just going to stop at that point. So 64 vertices, vertices gave me a pretty nice, nice circle. I'm, I'm not, probably not going to leave it like that. I'll probably end up beveling it, and I think we'll do that. So I've selected the outer edge. And you'll notice that these supporting edges come off pretty much perpendicular to the circle, which is what we need for a bevel. So I'll just do it there. Control B, pull. And you know, how many do you want? You want it like that, or I'm gonna put in, all right, we'll try three, three sort of type, because the smoothing's doing a pretty good job on this. All right, so we've got that, and we've got it going under a little bit. So let's see what we need to do. I think we need to build this piece before we can go any further. So it looks like we get a flat part and it comes out and it kind of rounds and then it goes back down. Maybe there's this little piece there or whatever. Um, let's just select the circle. It's already selected there. Shift S cursor is selected. I think we can switch back to 32 vertices or something lower because we'll probably do a subdivision on it. So um, let's try let's try a circle. You know what? I think I'm going to leave it at 32. Okay, so it's not going to be low poly, but I, I don't care. Um, uh, I'd rather it look good and maybe get away with one subdivision than do it at 22 or 18 and use two subdivisions. We'll see, though. All right, so what I want is a flat part, and then I want it to come out, right? So let's just build this thing, and then we'll get the, we'll get the size a little bit better. So flat part, right? So E and S come in sort of flat like that and then um, I could do uh, let's try it this way let's just extrude out for a region this region here is going to be extruded in a moment and then it goes flat again so let's do that let's try that something like this so let's then take these I switched to face selection I did shift alt and click there and then let's extrude this out just like that now we'll have to give this a little bit of thickness so let's try to round this just with beveling so shift alt and click this edge and this edge and control B and pull and I'm gonna pull quite a bit till they almost meet and roll my mouse up a little bit probably using more 
polys than I would need. That's too jagged for me, so I am going to need a subdivision. And this whole thing is going to need a bit of thickness, so I'm going to slash key to focus just on that. And I'm just going to extrude the edges back right here. I'm going to select that edge, E to extrude. I'm going to pull it back a little bit. And then I'm going to bevel this edge. I can get away with just three. And I'm going to do the same with this one. Not that we're ever going to really see much of that, but I'm going to extrude it back just a little bit. And I'm going to bevel this one just uh, with three. What happened there? Let me do that again. Control B, pull. There, okay, I'm going the wrong way. And let's try Control 1. And if I have to go to Control 2, I will do that. Let's uh, make sure we're on flip. Slash key, bring stuff back. Well. All right, it's a little rounder than I may have liked. And I think I need to move this edge further out. And so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just slash key again, come back in here, shift alt and click this edge and control plus up to not there, control minus to there. And I'm going to scale, but not in the Y S shift Y. And I'm just going to hold control. I'm just going to do that. I'll leave that selected, come back and look, you know, that's probably fine. Like that. All right, it's a version of this, a version of it. Okay, I kind of wish I had chamfered it a little bit more, but I think we're, I think we're getting the general idea. Um, and now I probably will have to just scale it a bit. We'll get those clips in in a bit, but I want to show you the uh, the the wire part. Now this part actually does have to come back more. Let's turn that off. Uh, this edge. I'm going to extend that back in like that. Is that the one I wanted? Oh, let me check that out. Yeah, and I'm going to need, I think, an edge loop here. And let's put that back on for a second. Yeah, that's okay. Because the wire mesh is going to go into this a little bit. And I just want a little bit of depth. I may have less depth. So let's make sure our 3D cursor is there. And we're going to create this. All right. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to bring in a plane. Scale it down a bit. Make sure it covers. Rotate X 90. I'm going to scale it down a bit more. And I want it to yeah, be something like that. Okay, now I think I will focus just on those two things there. All right. So now to make the wire mesh, I'm going to add a bunch of edge loops like this. And I want one right in the middle on my cursor as well. So I'll go with that many. It's quite a lot. I'm going to press P to break them out and try to get the rest of it and so I just have the edges like that. All right. So it may not be as dense, but we're going to get something. All right. Now I'm going to convert these to a curve. And in the curve dialog box under geometry and bevel, I'm going to hold shift and just start pulling them up a little bit. So we start to get some thickness to them. Yeah, something like that. I can shade smooth. All right, now they're obviously sticking out, but because these are curves, I can, um, let's see, what's the best way to do this? I think I'll do it symmetrically. I could mirror this, actually. I could get rid of those. Let's do that, and then let's just select these points, S to scale. Bring it. This one's not even needed. Let's get rid of that. What was I thinking? S to scale and pull them sort of just under this big this big ring S and this one S so 
So I'm just selecting the points and pressing S. Those one, other ones are probably hidden, but we'll, do this, we'll just do it this way. And then we'll look at where this thing needs to be positioned. Okay, my 3D cursor is right in the middle, so I should be able to just mirror this. Okay, let's um, let's select it and pull them down into here. They may, yeah. Uh, as I look at this, I kind of wish I didn't do this part. I kind of wish I just had extended the this round part back in. I feel like I've got this extra bit. And did I bevel this? I I did, but it didn't. It didn't get a very nice bevel. I'm going to fix up that bevel right now. I'm going to select that edge. Pull it out. I just want this a bit more rounded. That's a bit better. A little bit better, anyhow. It was way too sharp before. And then I'll just get this into the best position that I, I can, that I like. And that's that. Now, we need to do three vertical ones as well. So, I think I can go ahead and uh, apply the mirror. But really, once I do that... Um, it's going to have to it's going to want to be converted to a mesh so what i'll do is let's change the resolution to three before we convert it to a mesh and go ahead and say convert to mesh the mirror modifier gets applied and we have this we can always just merge by distance make sure see we got rid of a few vertices there so i now have that and looks like these ones are right in the middle so what i'm going to do is Shift H to focus just on that for the moment. Shift D. Rotate Y90. And I'm going to pull these out for now. Look at them like this. Go into edit mode. All right, so I've got that. And I want the middle one and then one near the edge. So, um... In fact, maybe I could hide the others. Maybe we don't need that. I want a middle one and maybe this one. So I'm just going to come in here. In fact, I'll go into vertex selection. I'll just select the ends of what I don't want or little bits of what I don't want. Which one do I want? The fourth one from the end. And then Control L. The ones that are not highlighted are the ones I'm keeping. I hope that's good because we are saying goodbye to you. Let's Alt H and have a look at that. Yeah, that looks okay. All right, so now what we'll do is we'll come in here and in vertex uh, mode, I'll just make sure these are actually all going to go under, aren't they? So I actually don't think I need to do that. So let's take these and pull them in until they sort of Am I going the wrong way? Let's just do G8, GY. All right. Until they cross. And we'll shade smooth. And that's what we'll end up getting. And I'll take these and these and uh, Control J. One more time, I will merge by distance if need be. Alt N, recalculate outside, just make sure. Slash key to bring other stuff back. Let's hide that for the moment. And this is what we are getting. Okay. Alt H. This, I'm going to just... Uh, no, you know what? That's too many polys. I'm getting rid of that. All right. And this, I'll leave that there for now. All right. We've made a good amount of, uh, of uh, headroom here. We've done quite a bit. Let's do one last thing and leave it at that. Let's work on one of these clips. It is not going to look exactly the same as this, but we'll make something that uh, hopefully seems functional. And then I will uh, make the final adjustments to the size of this if need be. So let's try this. Let's bring in a plane. Let's rotate X90. 
let's scale it down quite a bit we can make it bigger than it it would be and then scale it down more I'm gonna start making one I think on this side here okay so let's see it's gonna come out and it's gonna be rounded we'll just look at any one of these right rounded and it's gonna come in and then it's gonna drop down and on one of these you can sort of see that it seems like it would go under which one was the one maybe this one for now okay so rounded and come down drop down uh, and sort of more distant out here now I'm not going to be doing it to the side I'm going to be doing it up on an angle so there'll be more room all right because they're at sort of at 45 degree angles but I'm going to build it this way so I'm going to take this and let's just focus on that for the moment look from the top I've got those two vertices so let's say well, how do how long how do you want to come down we want to come down maybe not quite straight maybe just a little bit angled a bit and then we want to come out just a little bit because that's just going to go under anyhow okay so let's round this off in fact maybe it is a bit too much like that let's round this off so let's select these vertices here shift control b pull they're not overlapping because see the clamp is remembered it was on before so let's do that and then roll up a bunch of times get a nice roundness and then i think i want to take all these I'm gonna mer uh, merge by distance anyhow. And I think I want it a little bit longer this way. Ah, I didn't properly select it all to merge by distance. Now I did. And now I can move this back out. Okay. Um, I'm going to be beveling this stuff in just a bit, but let's, before we do that, let's maybe just make this a little bit more like that. And let's take this and give it some thickness I think I will use E and Alt S. Let's try E and Alt S and pull or push. And we're not going to need that back face there. And now I can shift Alt and click these edges so they go all the way around and bevel them. I'm going to use two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to bevel. Am I going to bevel the top and the bottom? you know just to be on the safe side i think i'll do top and bottom okay i'm going to look here control b pull i just need three in this case so i've got this i could just punch a hole in it but i'd like something else on here if i could what can i do can i select all these faces just the top if i inset fix that up later what can I do here maybe I'll do that and leave that for the moment come back to that and just go ahead and make my hole now do I need a hole you probably don't if you're doing this in texturing but I'm, I'm going to do a hole anyhow so the way I think I'll do this is I'm going to select these vertices here and bring my 3D cursor. So I'm in the vicinity. And I'm going to bring in a cylinder. I'm sure I could get away with 24 vertices for something so small. Rotate X90. Now, I'd like to see where my edges are as well there, okay. I don't know that I'm going to be able to do much of a design. All right, well, let's just go ahead and, and put a hole in this thing. On this piece, I'm going to add a Boolean. Let's come in here now and try to bevel this, see how well it takes a bevel. I could probably just do the top, and I think I will. I'll throw in a few extra edges 
and we have this now that hole looks a little bit big but you know really the whole thing is going to be kind of small anyhow so let's go with that and um i think any other details i would do um like this i think i will bring in simply a plane it's not going to be the same as the reference but that's going to be okay let's do this let's bring this over here scale this in the z scale it in the x to make a narrow piece like this and let's uh let's round these i've got clamping on let's just go with that uh, let's merge by distance pull it out a little ways i'm going to extrude back and i'll delete that back face and then i'll just select this this face here and let's just bevel this make it nice and round like that and shade smooth and yeah that's going to be okay just get the size that we want for this i can make it bigger let's use the array in the x give it a bit more room and we'll have maybe three of these on here just like that and um i can make them a little bit more the scale them in the y a little bit more prominent perhaps like maybe like that and i will apply the array and i'm going to uh, join them to there and i'll shade smooth this and then add weighted normal and normals auto smooth and we'll just have to get rid of this because uh, i put that back on there to do the boolean slash key to bring it back so it's all one piece and that's going to be my my clip but i may put a bolt in there or a screw let's see if we can get this to work now um i may have to extend this down further or pull this out uh, I'm thinking that this whole unit maybe should come out. Let's try GY. Let's bring it out just a little bit anyhow. I think, yeah, I don't want it buried in the hole. Let's let's go a little bit more even, uh, GY. Which means, uh, that's not quite right yet, but it means, let's hide that, that this part here can come out. Let's just select those and uh, gy let's bring them out something like this and then let's work on this clip to make it fit so uh, i'm going to come in here i'll go into wireframe and vertex and box select all of this and i'm going to look from the side focus on it i'm just going to pull it down a little ways look from the top and make sure everything's looking okay let's Look in solid view now. Uh, it doesn't have to make contact with that because it should be, oops, uh, covered. And that is kind of the look that I'm going to go for right there with that. And so, and so I think I'm going to start setting that up now. So let's come in here, and again, I may tweak it a bit later. Let's put the 3D cursor there. Let's take this, and let's go into edit mode and set the 3D cursor, pivot to the 3D cursor. Let's, uh, let's Shift-D, rotate Y 180, select the whole thing, Shift-D, rotate Y 90. So we have all of that, and then let's just rotate 45 see how it's all looking okay not bad let's see what if I scale these in the Y a little bit Hey, okay, they're a little bit off the surface but I think that's okay let's select everything and alt n recalculate outside merge by distance and have a final look at this let's take this let's close you up let's shut that off let's try this with shadow see if it makes any difference we'll have a closer look at these edges later 
let's try maybe that mad cat or let's try maybe that one and this is what we're getting so far all right well that's quite a lot of work for now I may want to put some edge detail on this actually so let's leave it at that and we'll come back and we'll carry on with the air conditioner in the next video